Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we've got an LTX 1000 Craftsman. Um, the LTX version is a upgraded version of the LT 1000. This one, uh, the, the standard LT 1000 from this era would have had a Briggs, 18 horse, but a Briggs. This has got an 18 horse Kohler. Uh, they both had the heavy duty 12 gauge decks. This one has an ammeter on it, the other one didn't. So the, this one's hydrostatic as well as the other LT. But uh, this was the just the premium version. So it had a couple of little nice features on it that were a little different than the green ones. The uh, most, most notably was the Kohler engine. The Kohler was an upgrade over the Briggs at the time. So this was a bit of a panic. This customer, this customer job, this customer recently had to put a coil on this machine. Uh, after 20 years, I guess the original coil finally decided he's had enough. So, <laughs> customer put a coil on there and it fired up okay again, but the spark came back, but it's uh, blowing smoke like crazy. Runs real rough, bogs down, blows blue smoke at the muffler. So I popped over to his place there and had a look at it, and sure enough, there's a, looks like there's an extra three liters in the crankcase, so, and it smells like gas. So the fuel... Weight of the fuel in the tank has overcome the needle in the carburetor. There's no fuel shut off on this. There will be by the time I'm done. <laughs> so we're going to put a fuel shut off in. We're going to pull the carb apart, make sure there's no debris stuck in that needle. We're going to change the oil out, put some straight 30 in there, change the filter. And uh, this one should be back in business. So we'll get you in a stand. We're going to get that hood off of there so we can see some, uh, get some light in there and see what we're looking at. And, uh, We'll get you going on this project. Okay, let's jump in. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the needle nose pliers. We're going to just pinch off the fuel line here. There are special hose pinchers that you can buy. These work just as well, as long as you don't go too crazy and destroy the hose. So we're just going to cut this line here. There's not a lot of room on the back side. Well, I suppose we could put it there. But if we put it there, the customer can reach it better without having to get off the tractor. So maybe we'll do that. We'll get these pinchers down over here. Just pinch the line off. We're going to cut it in the middle. We're going to lose some, maybe. Yeah, a couple of drops. We're going to put our valve in. Are you even seeing what I'm looking at? There we go. So gonna put our valve in there's a flow arrow on it somewhere there it is arrow is pointing in this direction so that's the flow direction let's get that shoved in there somebody asked me once about putting hose clamps on these and I usually don't uh, I haven't had an issue where they leak usually if it's a nice tight fit you don't have an issue so let's shut it off there our fuel line is now Got a valve in it. Yeah, that's not bad. It's nice and easy to reach. I'm not sure if you can reach it with a hood on or not, but uh, worst case scenario, you can flip it up with one hand and reach in there and get her done. Got a bit of a mess down here. There's oil. This is a uh, it's a quick drain. So when you get the tractor, it comes with this hose that you're supposed to put on. <laughs> you can tell I'm in a hurry comes with a hose that goes on here and you drop it down and then you can just let it drain into a bucket uh, once you get your hose set you just give this a twist give it a pull and the oil comes out so this oil is full of gas full full checking the dipstick our level is level is here so that's where my thumb is the full mark on the dipstick is actually right there. There is a lot of gas in this engine. Not for long. We're going to get that out. So, let me grab a green bucket. Turning this tire either one direction or the other is going to help us here. Got to get a drain bucket underneath there. Maybe I'll use my old trick, just a pan and a Pan with a piece of corrugated plastic. This is just a old sign. So yeah, it just fits. 
I'll get you backed up. You can get a bit of a wider angle. See what's going on. So, cap is off. Twist it to the left. Give her a pull. Whoa! And everything just comes flying out all over the floor. Exactly what I planned on. Coming out like water. Flowing out like gas, actually. Because it stinks like gas. Yeah. The engine was actually hydraulic and on gasoline. It wouldn't crank over. It would crank a short amount. It would just come to a stop. So, we got to get all this mess out of here. Well, we got the tractor in here. Oh, well, we do have an a new oil filter for it. I've got a new one for this Kohler. Uh, it's right there on top of the fuel tank. While it's in here, I'm going to blow out the air filter. The pre-filter's got a bunch of fuzz on it, and the internal filter is a paper pleated filter, and we'll just blow that out with the compressed air and put it back into service. We're not doing a full once-over on this. We're not doing a... This isn't a, a fix-up to, to resell. This is a customer job, so... We're just getting it fixed and getting it back so we can cut his hay field in the backyard. <laughs> I've known this machine since it was brand new, nearly 20 years ago. It has been, with the exception of the coil, I had the bowl off the carburetor I think two years ago. There was a bunch of crud in it, I just cleaned it and it worked out okay. Then this spring, used it once or twice maybe, and then uh, the coil went and no spark. And then, now this. This is, to the best of my knowledge, this is the only issue this tractor has ever had in 20 years. These are good machines. This customer takes care of his equipment. But it's 20 years old. It's, uh, it is just it's showing its age. So, I don't think we're into too much of a big deal here. This valve right there is going to be perfect. It's going to save a lot of issues. I don't know why they didn't come with a valve in the factory. I mean, any lawn tractor that's got a fuel tank above the carburetor relies only on the float and needle in that carburetor to stop it from overflowing the, the carb and filling the engine up just like this one did. Uh, the exception being some engines, uh, Kohler's and Kawasaki's have a fuel pump on the engine itself. That's a different animal. They don't tend to overflow, but the ones that just rely on the float bowl and the carburetor, man, they they eventually get tired and they overflow the seats and this, the needle in the seat don't quite seal 100% like they used to. And uh, anyways, I'm just rambling while this thing's draining because it's still draining. <laughs> well, we'll let that drain while it's doing that drifting out. I'm going to blow that air filter out. You don't need to hear that. That's too noisy. All right, so the oil's all drained out. Saw a couple of grease fittings hanging out of the front of the axle spindles here, so I'll grease them too. So. Hopefully, most of the oil is out of this filter. It's upside down, like the threads are down here, so most of the oil should have drained out while the rest of the crankcase was draining, but we got the new filter ready. Already wiped fresh oil around the gasket. And we got some coming out. Doesn't look too bad yet, but we're not all the way off yet. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> yeah, lots came out. <laughs> yeah, puddles. So... We got some more of that taken out of there with a rag because it's sitting in there in a big puddle right at the top here. I'll soak a lot of that up because that's damn near straight gas. There's quite a bit of it. I don't need to circulate that through the fresh oil. So that oil filter adapter is actually quite deep. Got quite a bit in there. I'm going to suggest to him that he changes the oil in another week or so, or even after the next cut. A lot of this gas will burn out of here. But uh, for what it costs for, what, a quart and a half oil? Leave the filter, but 
put a new fresh quart and a half oil on it and I'll get rid of a lot of the problems that may still be lurking in that engine. A bunch of crud in there. There we go. So it's all that's all empty now, it's dry in there. New oil filter's got oil on the gasket. We'll give her a spin. What goes on? A lot easier than it came off. Okay. Nice. Now the carb bowl. We'll take that off and see if there's any crud in the needle. See if well, we'll see what's in there anyways. Yeah. Alright, we'll get you repositioned over that side. See if I can get a little light on the subject. It's a little dark over there. Pull the air filter housing off and where we're looking there. We'll pull this off and the manifold. Or the intake tube. Pop these couple of ten millimeters off. We'll get that piece out of the way and see what it looks like underneath. Just we'll grab tools here. Like that. And that. And that. Let's just throw it on the floor. One nut. Two nuts. See if that comes off nice. Relatively. There's a tube here for the crankcase vent. Boom. Out it comes. All right. Yeah. Gas sitting right there at the edge of the carburetor. Oily gas. That will definitely cause a problem. Okay. One connector for the solenoid. That's probably not working in anyways. Need that special wrench that I ground down nice and thin. We'll get that bowl off of there. A soaked rag, we'll leave that underneath there and catch all the gas that we can. Gas and oil. Goil. Maybe, what you call it. There we go. Oh, gas, gas definitely coming out. Blit. Oh, there's a bunch of floaties in there. Oh, can you see? Maybe. I don't want to dump it on the camera. Anyways, there's floaties in there. Well, that ain't good. That ain't no good for nothing. That could have been a major problem the whole time. A little piece of that debris gets stuck under the, in between the needle and the seat, and that'll definitely hold the needle open. I don't know where the debris is coming from, because this was a problem the last time I had this carb bowl off. So I'm not going to pull everything up. I'm not going to pull the carb off, I don't think. Eh. Nah. Get my hands a wipe here, a little bit on the rag. They'll smell like gas, but they'll be clean. I'm gonna pull that. Pull the float, float pin out. Pin is out. Needle is out. Gasket fell off. Oh, look at that needle. Oh, float's not sunk. There's no fuel in the inside the float so it's got a rubber tip needle which means it's got a metal seat a little bit of black on there but nothing it's dirty but it wasn't not damaged or bent or otherwise mangled so I'm just gonna grab a little mirror a little dental mirror and I'm gonna shine a light and see if I can see up inside that bowl Looking up into the, the seat, I want to see if I can see any anything sitting on that seat. I think what we'll do is we'll pull the fuel line off from the filter of the carb. We'll pull that fuel line off. There might be this, the hose actually might be deteriorating inside, so we'll pull it off. We'll blow air through. I'll inspect it and blow air through it. I'll, now you know what? I'm just gonna, it's a quarter inch line. I'll put a new piece on it. I'm looking 
I won't be able to get you in there. But I'm looking up inside there. So I got the light shining right into the seat. And the seat is clean. It's even shiny. There's no corrosion in there. So I think we're okay. I think it might have just been a chunk of that black stuff that was in the bowl floating around in there. So that's what we'll do. We'll pull that line off. I'll just replace it. There shouldn't be anything coming from the tank side because there's a filter there. So if we can get this line replaced, I think it might help with our problem here. This is, it's a, a return problem. This has happened before. So, we got to start somewhere. We can, we can guess and speculate what's going on, but for what it takes to put a piece of quarter inch fuel line on here, we're going to eliminate the possibility that it's the line coming apart internally. It does it eventually. Rubber breaks down over time. Whee! Off she comes. But not without a fight. It doesn't feel bad. It feels a little mushy in places. It doesn't look bad. It externally, it doesn't look so bad. It's a little dirty, but it's on dirt. Dirt wipes off. Save those clamps. I'm not seeing a problem here, but for what it takes, I'm going to gently blow air in the fuel inlet to make sure everything comes out of the seat. But there's nothing up in behind there. We're going to replace that fuel line. There's a blue right the whole passage out between the fuel inlet and that needle so that should be nice and clean in there now let's get the bowl and stuff back on where'd our needle go there it is there's our needle there's our float pin here let's get that wiggled up in there Without it falling off. Don't fall off. Okay, good. That looks beautiful. Okay, this bowl gasket. I ran all over Hell's Half Acre trying to find a gasket to fit this thing the last time I had it apart. This is a Briggs and Stratton gasket. This is where I went. I had no idea how to wasn't one of my local places, not one of my usual haunts where I get parts from. I was in a, not my hometown, I was in another town and just trying to find something to make this work because it was all apart and it wasn't doing anything what I wanted it to do. And this disc gasket's all swollen up, doesn't even fit on the carburetor anymore. Oh, good lord. <laughs> Let me see if I got something in stock that'll work in there. Hang on. Nothing's behaving for me. Carb's got to come off. One Z bend is one way, one Z bend is the other way. Bowls on the ground. Come on, you son of a gun. Okay. This one is this way. Let's see if we can get this one off first. Without bending all the rods. Way out of shape. There we go. Okay, one's out. I should make the second one easier. <laughs> should. Come on. There we go. It's out. Oh, stupid wire on it. All right. I couldn't get the gasket to stay up in here. I don't have the exact right gasket. This one might work. I don't know what the heck happened with the other one, but it's so swollen up that it won't seal at all, and this one's not any 
better. Secondary ridge on there that I couldn't see from underneath. It's got crap in it though. Let's get that out of the way. It wasn't leaking before. Come to think of it, I did have this problem. It's it's like I said, it's a Briggs and Stratton bowl gasket. It's not a Kohler. It's not for this engine. The one that I had on there. I think maybe it was last year I put that on. And it's sealed, and it worked. It just wasn't the exact right one. It just, it's what I had. It's what I could get. Oh, just stay where I put you. It doesn't want to behave. If it'll stay where I want it, It'll seal the carb. Stay. Oh, you son of a. <laughs> Man, this is fidgety. I'm sure you don't want to watch 38 minutes of me dicking around with an O-ring, so I'll turn it back on when I got it on. Got it. Ended up with a bowl gasket from like a, I don't know, four horsepower Briggs & Stratton. Man, tried like three or four of the gaskets, nothing fit. But that one worked, so that's what we're going with. So let's change that piece of fuel line. Just going to pull some out of my bulk. I got a bulk roll of quarter inch fuel hose. There we go. Snipped off a nice piece. Where on earth are my pliers? There. Got a little spring clamp on there. It had one, so I'll put one back on it. And the other one is down on the floor. There it is. Okay. That guy on air. Let's get him on a fuel filter. I like that hose, actually. This is bulk hose from my supplier, and it, uh, it's nice and flexible. Actually, works works really good. Let's get that. that fuel clamp turned a little bit. We'll get it up in its clip. There we go. That's home. Lines bottomed out on the carburetor. Get that clamp on there. That's beautiful. The entire garage stinks like gas. <laughs> the fuel solenoid that might or may may or may not work is now on there. I've blown out the air filter. Give her a wipe. And get this back on there. Get our breather pop back in there. Nice. That's on, that's on. One nut. Two nuts. It's actually, it's, uh, it's getting a little on the later side here. It's uh, 20 to 10 at night right now. Well, that's not bad because once I fire it up and all that smoky, oily gas and crap comes out of the exhaust, nobody's going to see the smoke. <laughs> I'll push it outside and Fire it up and see what we get. So we uh, we checked on that car and it looked okay. There's a little bit of debris in the in the seat area or in the bowl. So 
I'm going to fill it up with oil and then we'll back it out of the shop here and I'll fire it up and see what kind of mosquito killing cloud we can make. Well, no smoke. The lifters are a little rattly. These are hydraulic lifters, so um, they got to work themselves out with that thin oil in there. Put 10 to be a 30 in there. This is a the Kohler has the hydraulic lifters, and straight 30 doesn't seem to work so good in there. But there's no smoke so far. Anyways, runs good now. <laughs> it's a little late, so I can't really be revving it up and trying all kinds of stuff, but. Let me shut it off. Hang on. There's the beast. Done and dusted. We did the uh, carb fix. Put a fuel valve in it. And I believe we did a fuel filter on it. It's been a couple of days. and This isn't <laughs> this isn't shot right away after I had it running in the garage there. But anyways, the uh, oil's filled up. Runs great. Ready for the customer. And that will end this video. Thanks for joining me guys. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you do subscribe, click the bell icon to notify you when I upload new videos. Until the next one, take care.